need, needless to say, I'm always pleased when we win. And, uh, I, I, I've been really challenging us to try to figure it out defensively and get more just engaged and active. And you know, I thought they tried to do that tonight, especially in the first half. I thought John Newman looked like John Newman again defensively. Got his hands on a lot. And our deflections were better. So that's you hold somebody under 50. I'm going to be happy. That's the truth of it. Uh, I thought we had a chance to keep them at 45, and they scored five on the last two possessions. I was, wasn't happy about that. I got on Odie a little bit because I thought he gave up the three in the corner because he kind of froze and help. And then he gave up the split in the ball screen. They lay it in. So those, that was, I told him, I said, shoot, I'm pissed about the last five because I thought we had a chance to hold a team to 45. Uh, but you hold a team under 50. Our defense got more active for the first time in a long time. That's the stuff I'm pleased with. Uh, breakdowns are more than there, and uh, there's a, there's a lot of stuff we got to improve. Um, I think I said this on the radio a minute ago. I, I, I everybody should know this. Uh, we we uh, those guys in that locker room. We we've taken some of these last couple losses really hard. I mean, hard. You know, harder than I've had teams, and longer than I've had teams take losses and. You know, we, we're not okay with them. So we've really tried to address some things and work on some things. And at the same time, I've seen our guys lose a little bit of their confidence. You know, I think everybody can see that. Like they're questioning, you know, a little bit, which is, is part of the growing process. Uh, so I don't I don't like the 18 turnovers at all. And, and give Joe, Joe – Joe Diallo's done a terrific job at Merrimack, guys. He's been there eight years. He's built a identity. He's built a big-time program. They, they won their league a year ago. They couldn't go to the NCAA tournament because they hadn't had enough years in Division One. The team that they beat goes fairly Dickinson and then beats Purdue in the NCAA tournament. I mean, that's how good Merrimack is, and they've been that way year after year. So he's done a hell of a job, and that zone is – that's the type of zone other coaches study. Like sometimes coaches do things and everybody else wants to try to figure out how. You know, Joe, Joe's got a zone that we're all trying to learn watching it because it's unique, it's effective. And they're like top 10 in the nation in turnover percentage in his own. So I knew we'd turn the ball over a little bit tonight. Like I, they, they turn everybody over. It's what they're good at doing. 18 turnovers is more than we should turn the ball over against them. So I'm not pleased with that, but we got to get our swagger back a little bit. So tonight it was just about trying to play the next play and letting our guys make some mistakes and find their confidence. I'm glad we finally made a couple three point shots. I thought we took good shots and made a couple. Uh, but, you know, all in all, am I, am I pleased with how we're playing? I'm not. Uh, but I'm glad we, we got our defense more active. I was pleased that, that we held a team under 50. And, you know, I thought we got, we got to kind of get that confidence back playing, and I, I think we will. Is there a way to fix the confidence situation with this team? Because it was it's evident that they're not carrying themselves similar to how they did two weeks ago. And or is it just a matter of you got to get out there and play better and it comes with the territory? I, if I had the magic wand, I'd, I'd never have a team that had any confidence problems. I, I, I think over 13 years as a head coach, I'd say that our teams have been really confident, played free and loose. You know, I think guys that have played for us would say that. But, again, they've taken the losses hard. We've tried to address some necessary learning and teaching from some of the reasons that, you know, we're not overcoming some of these losses. Like, there's issues out there that, you know, we're not trying to shot selection and, you know, all those kind of things that, you know, anybody can watch the TV and go, they shouldn't be doing that. So we're not stupid. So you address them. But then kids are trying to figure it out. These kids care a lot. They're trying. They're listening. And now you can kind of see them a little bit the last couple of weeks because they want it so bad. You can see them. And that's just part of the process. You know, and it's just part of the growth process. You guys got to just remember they're still kids. Like, they're still young people, and they're trying to be great. And they want – this group wants it badly. Um, and so now we got to kind of work through it a little bit. And I thought there was some good moments tonight. I, I did. I thought Seamus the last couple games is find, you know, finding his rhythm back on offense a little bit. Uh, it's good to get Jamil just knocking the rust off. Like, he's rusty, and you can see it. Like, I don't know what he said before I walked in here, but I doubt he think he doesn't think he played well. But everybody can see the talent. I mean, 
you know, Day-Day's kind of getting back to himself. I thought Day-Day guarded again tonight for the first time. Like, he was better on the ball defensively. He had that one late. He lets a guy get by him and fouls. But outside of that, I thought he was pretty good. Uh, you know, Vic, 8 for 14. I thought he made some nice decisions tonight. I think you saw some things starting to come back. Jizzle's finding his way. So, yeah, I, it's going to be a process. But in college basketball, it's going to do this a little bit. The good teams do this, but they go like this as they're, as they're going up and down. Normal teams do this, but they kind of just keep doing it all year. And the bad teams do this, and they go the other way. So it's going to be up and down a little bit. You just want to keep that that line on that bar graph, right, going that way while it goes up and down. And if this key team keeps doing that, it's going to be okay. Is there an update on Aziz and, and CJ? And, and in a way, was I mean, you don't want Aziz hurt, but it was good to get medals the, the minutes, and he gives you a lot of boards there. Yeah, I mean, uh, you guys look down, it's 11 rebounds. And I don't think he played well, and he doesn't think he played well. And he, he, I don't think anybody that watched doesn't see the talent, right, the explosiveness, the hands, the feet. And and so he's going to be just fine. That was cool. But, now we want Aziz and, and CJ back out there. I think we're a better team with those guys. I think everybody knows that. I mean, the analytics say that. I, my eyes say that. The players think that. And... Uh, Aziz, you know, in the first two minutes of the Dayton game, he, we, we, you know, he was free under the basket. We threw him a lob, and somebody cracked down and hit him really hard. They, they, now, they did not call the foul, so I don't think everybody understands it. It was a foul. Uh, but, you know, he jacked his back up bad. And any of you guys that ever had a back issue, I've had a couple. He, he's in pain. You know, hurts to stand up, sit down, all that. We did x-rays. There's no structural issues or anything like that. It's just muscular, but he's in pain. Uh, I, he'll be back. I, I just don't know if it'll be tomorrow or the next day. after. I don't know. So it's kind of a day-by-day -day thing. And CJ pulled his hamstring in the first half against Dayton and then gutted it out in the second half. It definitely wasn't 100%. And I think with his history, he tore a hamstring. Uh, or I don't know. What the, yeah, I think he completely tore his hamstring in Kentucky his first year and missed the entire season. So with the history of that, uh, our, our trainer, Bob Mangine, feels really strongly that we got to be cautious. CJ would tell you he could have played tonight. Bob felt like it was the right thing to do. And if there's anything that, 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 that I'll tell you is that I listen to Bob Mangine and I trust Bob Mangine. So uh, he's got all of our best interest and certainly the players' best interest. So that's why those two didn't play. And it's a day-by-day -day thing. And I, 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 they'll be back. I hope they'll be back by Friday. This team led Florida at the half and, uh, and was only down six at Ohio State. So you, you kind of saw this coming with their style of play. Yeah, and they had, I think anybody should go look at it. There's a pretty controversial play at the end of the Georgetown game. You know, they had, they, they had a legit – they were in a one-possession game at Georgetown and had a legit chance to win. There's a controversial play. Uh, jo Joe's press conference, he went crazy about it. If you guys want to go research that. So, yeah, they – they played three high major games, Ohio State. I mean, it's a game. And I thought Ohio State played well and had a good plan against their zone. They're beating Florida at the half, and then Florida kind of broke away from them in the second half. And then, uh, you know, uh, Ohio State, Florida. And then they, they, they had a one-possession game with Georgetown with a chance to win in a controversial play at the end. So, I, again, I got a lot of respect for Joe Gallo uh, and what he's built. And... He's picked to win his league, and he's got a really good chance to do that. There's a good chance you guys will watch this team play in the NCAA tournament. So do I think we did everything like I want to do? No. Am I excited about how we played tonight? No. But I am pleased that we held them under 50. And I, anytime you beat a team that's going to play in the tournament, most likely, you know, by double figures, that's a good thing. Vic said one of the main reasons for the response after the Xavier and Dayton losses the guys who have been here know the expectations for this program. Have you kind of seen the guys that have been here set the tone in practice after those losses? Yeah, you know, uh, like like I said, that the kids want it as bad as you can want it. And the kids that have been here want it as bad as you can want it. I mean, there's kids crying in the locker room after, after the Dayton game. I, you know, like, they'd have been here. And so, like, it's this, this isn't a – a, a want to type of thing. They, they can't want it more. Some, they might want it too much. We all might want it too much type of thing. Um, we're trying to learn what it takes 
as a team, you know, to win on the road or outside of this building against the best teams. And we're trying to build the habits and what we do every day to do that. Like, we got to learn how to defend with the right mentality as a unit for 40 minutes, every single possession. You cannot win on the road in college basketball if you don't have that approach. You cannot win. All right, and so now we're back at home where we're a little more comfortable, but we got to try to build that now. We got to try to build that in practice. So if we get back on the road or as the competition gets better and better, we can't miss an opportunity to work on that. I think our guys are trying to learn what it takes. They can't want it more, but they got to learn what it takes to win. We're, we're learning as a group what it's going to take to win. I hate that we're learning that through losses. I, I think we're good enough to learn through wins. I'm not making an excuse. But you're going to have to learn. Every group's going to have to learn. And it's not like we got 10 guys in that locker room that played in Final Fours, guys, or won conference championships, right? Like we got a group that wants to, that has the right mentality. We have talent. We have great kids. They want it. They work at it. But we got to learn as a group what this is going to take. And our, our returning players are really trying to figure it out because they, they want to win against the – Local opponents, they want to win every night. They want to win against the best teams, and we got a lot of big-time games ahead on our schedule. One more. Wes, while you're figuring it out and while your kids are figuring it out, uh, how hard is it to establish an identity if, if that's important to you, an identity starting with defense or something else? Establishing identity is everything to me. I mean, I, and it – I don't make excuses. I don't sit up here and make excuses. You guys have been around me for three years. I'll face the fire, admit when we have wrong, when we have faults. We're not in the excuse business. Nobody wants to hear that crap. Okay, I certainly don't live like that. Um, it's been part of the challenge to creating a real identity. Is like there's been a lot of changes, and I'm not complaining about it. But you know, at, adding is ease changes the makeup of the team. Everybody, and I, that's a good problem. Okay, I'm not complaining about it, but it changes the makeup of the team. He's a unique player. There's nobody else on our team that plays defensively and offensively like Aziz. So we got to figure out, and he's a major impact player. So we got to figure out we didn't have him for however many competitions, I don't know, six or something like that. Now we got to adjust, get him involved, because we're going to be better with him. And, figure, and then that affects other guys. And so you're adjusting that identity or that plan. And then you add Jamil Reynolds, and I, again, I, he's a major impact player, and he's unique. So it's not like, you know, you, you've been doing all this stuff that worked for Vic, and it was it, they're different players. So trying to kind of find this team's identity, whether it's strategically, whether it's like in competition when the chips are down, like it's a process, and it's very important to me. But it doesn't. You don't snap your fingers and it happens overnight. Um, and we've been working at that for. Two, two years of change, some of the mentality things. Um, and so, yeah, guys like John, and I, I was upset with John's play defensively in the last game because he understands our defensive identity, and he sets the tone for that for this team. And the minute he gets away from being John Newman, that's going to make us take a step back. Uh, tonight I thought John Newman was John Newman again. I don't care about his line. I mean, John Newman was John Newman on D. And so there are some things that have been established, work ethic and approach every day and uh, you know a defensive mentality but this team's still learning how to do that and we've had a lot of changes and I'm not making an excuse but that does create some different challenges than a normal year Vic you had it going early were they able to do something that kind of took away what you were seeing early or just kind of the flow of the offense with that weird zone uh, yeah we were I personally was ready and coach prepared us uh, to use our size more down in the paint because they're smaller. So, and I think we utilized it very well early in the game. Jamil, what's it been like, you know, being on the court? And then, you know, you saw you had a couple of missed dunks tonight. Is it kind of just getting your timing up and getting going, getting as many minutes as you can in tonight? Well, I said, uh, I'm still a little rusty, you know, it's been a while. So I'm trying to get back in that, you know, that game mode, you know what I mean? Getting used to everything, that's all it is. What types of things are they doing to you guys in the paint underneath? They, they were slapping the ball away a little bit. You know, not particularly both of you, but but, but some. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, they're very active on the ball and it's hard to, we gotta keep uh, working on being strong on the ball and it's hard to keep it and chin it enough to rebound. Like a couple of times happened to Jamil and me. Like you just gotta put it up there and we're trying to make it more complicated than it is. So it's not as much damage as we gotta get better. Does that defense make you kind of play ugly? Uh, or you're used to getting up and down and it just kind of, because they've kind of done the same thing with some other teams. Yeah, I think it was an ugly game. We missed a lot. That's kind of makes you rethink your shots, shot selection. But down the stretch, I think we did a pretty good job. Jamil, just talk about the environment here tonight. Obviously, it's your first game in a Cincinnati uniform, but you've played here before. Just talk about the environment as you wear that Cincinnati uniform here for the first time at Fifth Third Arena. Well, I, um, I love the environment. You know, I'm, I'm kind of I'm new to it. You know, just coming from Temple, like cause we, we have like the kind of fans that we have here. So you know, I love it. Like it's just you know, like, when you play here, it's like it's plus ten. Just the environment here, so it just makes like I play harder, and, you know, and like I can feel the energy. Vic, how comfortable do you feel with that baby hook shot, and how well do you think it can it can operate against teams that are going to have bigger size in the in the Big Twelve and moving forward this season? Uh, feel very comfortable, but yeah, like like you said, going into better game, better uh, team, better games. Have to improve it even more because I thought I missed a couple of easy ones that I should have made, and I'm going to need for our team to make them uh, later in the year. So I feel confident, but I got to keep working on it and also on the counter. So, Jamil, in less than 15 minutes, you had 11 rebounds. I mean, the offensive game wasn't going how you wanted, but did you make an emphasis to, uh, to crash the boards on a smaller team? Uh, like this whole week, coach, like, he's been on me, like, stay on the glass, you know. Crash every time, crash every time, because you know, sometimes in practice, you know, I, I take plays off, so I have to make sure, you know, I win. Crash every time, and we're done. Jimmy, will take us back to Friday. You get word that, that you know, everything's going to be clear and you're going to be good to go without any concerns. What was that like for you? What was that feeling after waiting almost two months to, to get the news? It was like a, a huge, like, relief, you know, I've been, like, I've been wanting to play like ever since, you know, the first game. But, was, you know, just, like, it wasn't like, like, the coach was like, oh, yeah, he told me, like, like, like I don't get too excited, like, like, just get your feet wet, you know, it's the first game, you know, and, and, and like, and, and, like, it's a big game, so, 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 although, like, you know, like, 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 I really wanted to play, I just got to take my time, you know, and get back in the rotation. Vic, coach said after the Xavier loss that you guys had kind of a different attitude and that you were pissed off. What was the attitude in practice? What were the vibes like after the loss to Dayton? Was it similar? Or was it just a devotion to adjusting? Uh, yeah, we were pissed. And it kind of ruins your momentum that we had. And it's hard for some players, especially like who's been in this program and we had a high expectations from us going into the game. Didn't work out as well for us, but uh, Gotta keep the mind saying that that's why I don't feel as happy. I'm happy they were won, but I think we still gotta work on us and be better and more consistent throughout 40 minutes. Like Dayton showed, like we gotta, we, we have a long way to go. Like we need to play better on our own. We, we got a long way to go. And I'll, I'll bring it every day. And we, as a team, we need to keep staying focused and uh, focus on keep getting better. Victor, along those lines, how important is it to determine an identity for this team, who you guys are heading into the Big 12 play eventually? Uh, very important. That's what we're trying to do and we struggle as of right now, uh, playing road games like we saw Dayton and Xavier, probably two games we didn't look like us. We need to uh, keep practicing the habits we, we practice and coach uh, delivering, it, delivering it to us. So. It's very important going to the league and knowing what we can rely on consistently on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's what we're trying to work on. Vic, you finished with 18 points tonight on the 8 of 14 shooting. How important was it for you to have that night to build that confidence up again after a performance like Dayton where you just were held to four points on Saturday? Uh, even though I think I didn't play as good, the the numbers I put in very important for confidence, of course, especially what three games that you have as good of a game as I should have or expected for myself. So I think it's really important to finish strong and we have one more game to go to 
to the Christmas break, so it was very important. The two games left in the non-conference, what do you guys need to do as a team to continue to prepare for Big 12 play? Uh, like I said, keep, keep working on our identity, uh, keep working on being more consistent around 40 minutes, keep practicing hard, keep dropping those pennies, and uh, th those are the main things. Like just, just keep getting better, keep figuring out where, where, what we can rely on, what, what's our strength, uh, improving our weaknesses, and uh, I think future is bright. Any more questions? Thanks, guys. Thanks, fellas.